Good evening, Speed. My name is Rihanna Nicole, and I am the founder and creator of Lipstick Wars Poetry Slam. Lipstick Wars is a platform created to give a voice to women and girls through the art of slam poetry. Tonight, myself, Robin G., Jasmine Reed, and Diamond Roberts will be presenting poems to you. Poems about how we are feeling in this time, the sensitive time in our city. These poems are our protest. These poems are our testimonies. They are our truths. We hope you enjoy. The title of this poem is called Open Letter to Christ the King, the only black Catholic school in Little Kentucky. Dear Archdiocese, it's been over 24 years since the last time you've seen me. I bet you don't even remember me. My freshly greased scalp like an intersection between my light ponytails. Held together by pink and white knockers and barrettes that dangle like sleeping willow trees. Hair accessories just chiming like ghetto wind chimes whenever I look to left or right. Remember when I peed my pants arch? Remember when the kids on the school bus never let me forget how ridiculous I was in kindergarten? You were the first guy school in the neighborhood where the brown babies lived. The only school that didn't take God or prayer out. I had just got to the school, and after one year, you had enough of my pissy drawers and ringing hair. Guess you had enough of my smart ass. Thought you'd teach me how to become church instead. Leave me to house the sick, evil, lost, and unsaved. To be thankful through responsible stewardship of all God's gifts. Did you know... Then when I enrolled there, my mom, my mother had finally escaped my father's insecure hands. She was only trying to redeem her life so that my sisters and I could not learn how to cover black eyes. Did you know that when you took God from my textbooks, it left us with red eyes? I later found out when I was older and I would ask my mama, what's the name of that school I went to when I was young? She would tell me, and then she bowed her head in mourning. I later learned that not only was the Shawnee location the only black Catholic school in your network, but that we were the only Catholic school for the brown kids, and we were the only one you shut down. What do you have to say for yourself, Arch? Why did it take for the Jubilee year 2000 for you to forget the parish debt? Was it because the parish largely evolved as African Americans in the 1960s. You don't believe Jesus was black? We was the closest thing to God your Catholics will ever be. You so deliberate. Snatching God from his children. That year, you slammed the doors of possibilities in the face of a community who will later die for fun. Sincerely, a black girl who survived despite you. Um, my name is Diamond Roberts, and I am a local poet and activist from Lexington, Kentucky, who's recently been doing some traveling back and forth from Lexington to Louisville, you know, just covering the protest and uh, trying to get a feel for the energy that's in the air right now. And um, basically the conclusion that I came to was... Um, no matter how many words that I try to adequately string together to paint an image of what it's like living in the current state of our nation, sometimes words still fail. Living in a country with the history of ensuring that minorities undergo a number of traumas and oppression that we're unable to fully combat is mentally and spiritually taxing in more ways than one. But I will say that even in the midst of all of that, I've seen cities all over the country from Louisville and Lexington to Detroit come together and display an unshakable display of unity, community, and power. For the lives of George Floyd, David McAtee, Tony McCade, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and so forth, I've truly seen tremendous beauty grow from concrete pain. Number one by Diamond Roberts. For if I birth the black child like my ancestors, I shall weep. I will cry me a river like the one the slave mother sacrificed her baby in for its freedom. This shit run deep. 
tears runneth over, not from joy, because I know that class and complexion is all they'll see, not my gift to the world that grew inside of me. My name's William, not suspect, them words cut me deep. And Lord knows I don't want to give this world another black boy to mistreat. Seeing the potential prophecy for your child, I mean, what a conniption. And I don't want no son being born from my loins fitting the description. And having a daughter would be just as hard. Destroy a life like a Sada or a Sandra Blender when she get behind bars. Or maybe even Rakia Boyder before that live under a system that caused us to bear scars. Badges and pistols rejoice in this system that I do not trust. I mean, does Lady Liberty wear a blindfold so she ain't got to watch what they be doing to us? I mean, right, left, right, every turn we make, patrol tailing us, tense up, stay on your P's and Q's, seems like he's waiting on a slip up. Young black, we in this tenant car, they would never miss us. Kanye said, no matter what, you just a nigga in a coupe. And it seems like they just be saying, fuck the escalation training, brown body target practice, they ready to aim and shoot. See the lights, my stomach drops. Red, white, blue, nothing more American than a slave patrol killer. Cops, Black Panthers gone, but the Klan still exists. Racism still alive, they just be concealing it. And that's why when they in our neighborhoods, we tend to cut the lights and lock up the house, especially when it's summertime and they doing sweeps and wilding out. And it's hard for me to even care if they got good intentions or if it's your pops just because they dropped to steal breath of freedom. And that's why I can't really jig with cops. And if you wonder why they harbor brown bodies all the time, it's because the 13th Amendment banned slavery except for punishment as a crime. Rewind. I said if you wonder why they harbor brown bodies all the time, it's because the 13th Amendment banned slavery except for punishment as a crime. Know your rights, watch your back, and definitely free your mind. Plywood windows to ensure the glass don't shatter, but... Baton sticks and pepper spray keep reminding us that black lives don't matter and the blatant disrespect of a murdered black woman is continuous. So fuck your cries for peaceful protest and protect us with the same energy in which you safe keep all this brick and mortar. See, a compassionate city drenched in the blood of black people ain't gonna keep hearts warm. Concrete barricades may as well be black bodies blocking traffic. It's tragic that ain't no safe space made for us. Just locked doors and boards adorned with black artwork meant to distract us from the fact that our worth is only measured by our skill set. See, this city's appetite for devastating black lives and gaslighting the poor is atrocious. And Breonna Taylor's name ain't a scapegoat for gluttony. Four allies hiding behind poster boards and sharpies and no local news outlets being made safe haven for racist comments. And we seem to be defending our constitutional right to folks who can't seem to differentiate a protest from a riot. We're always being made to keep quiet or seem bitter. Code switching in white spaces, the Silent concerns and the loud whispers and traumas constantly triggered and buildings being deemed more worthy than a nick. <laughs> nah, this city ain't been feeling much like home to me because plywood windows are placed to ensure the glass don't shatter. But tasers and tear gas are constantly reminding us that black lives still don't matter. And the blatant disrespect of a murdered black woman is continuous. So fuck your peaceful protests and protect us with the same energy in which you safe keep all this brick and mortar because a compassionate city drenched in the blood of black people ain't never going to keep hearts warm. My city has a ferocious appetite for hot browns and brown liquor. It sits high and mighty on its brown derby horse, gets full from its winnings. Brown noses to fickle tourists, but forgets about the black and brown bodies waiting for a seat at the table. Even now, it still enjoys the tedious taste of Kentucky fried segregation but expects everyone else to find nutrients and its regurgitated integration and opportunities from its empty bluegrass palate. There never seems to be enough rations to go around, 
but the same people are getting fed over and over again. I pretend like I ain't hungry, though. Eat off the hearty pieces of my pride throughout the day. I sit impatiently waiting for more diversity, inclusive crumbs to fall from the greedy mouth of some white man who don't know nothing about the season in my poems. This chop house of a town knows how to hide the plate so well. I guess in hopes that we don't try to bite the hand that barely feeds us. We should have just pulled ourselves up by our bootstrap napkins and made reservations to get some scraps from somewhere, anywhere. Just not there, right? At least I can always go back to my fast food desert. Not a lot of substance, but we make it stretch. Stretch like your wallet. You know, they're handing out free produce to us brown folk now. I suppose an apple a day keeps the protests away. Or the poverty away. Or the police away. Or however that saying goes. But I like a fresh batch of greens and hot sauce with my pity. I wonder how many people do I have to serve before I get a decent meal. But never mind. No time to be selfish. Because in my city, we're getting ready for Derby. We're always getting ready for Derby. <laughs>